Well, it sounded like a really good opportunity. I mean, I read the ad and it's, you know, pristine northern location looking for human resources director. I applied, I got the job, I was so excited, got to the North Pole, and it wasn't what it was cracked up to be. I mean, Santa sounds like a jolly old soul, he's not. <laughs> he's a curmudgeon and a cheapskate. I mean, I got there, he wasn't even paying minimum wage. He was working the elves 24 seven, no overtime, nothing. And the next thing you know, they, they joined the International Toy Workers Union and walked out. And it, it was one of those things where all of a sudden I needed employees. And, and I didn't know what to do. I talked to Santa and Santa says, well, we're not buying new uniforms. So you're going to have to find people that fit into the elf uniforms. Well, I want you to look at this. Now, you tell me how you're going to find employees that fit in that. So I, I called the employment agency. And they said, we're fresh out of elves. And, and they got a, a little mixed up. They sent me Elvises. I had to send those back. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, we got it. We got an idea. We got seven employees that are going to be perfect. Seven dwarfs. They've been unemployed ever since Snow White ran off with that Prince Charming guy. And they're looking for jobs. And I thought, well, this, this could work. And so got them on board. And then the problem started. First of all, Happy flunked the pre-employment drug test. <laughs> yeah, and then Dopey couldn't pass the training program. I mean, you couldn't give him even the easiest thing to do. I mean, we said, go check the turn signals on the sleigh. He's been all day. They're working, they're not working, they're working, they're not working, they're working, they're not working. Uh, so we had to let him go. And then Sneezy went out on medical leave because it turns out he has allergies to reindeer dander and secondhand smoke from Santa's pipe. And then there's Grumpy. Grumpy, Grumpy was a piece of work. Um, next thing you know, he's complaining about everything from the food in the cafeteria to Santa's management style. And he gets all the other dwarfs all riled up. And they walk out and join the Toy Workers Union. And they pick it. They're picking in the toy shop. They're out there with their little sign saying, hi ho, hi ho, the fat man's got to go. And Santa, Santa was livid. And he said, okay, that's it. Then a union bust. I want you to find people that will cross that picket line. Had to go all the way to Ireland to do it, because again, they had to fit in those little outfits and those little beds in the bunkhouse. Um, got leprechauns. Small, look kind of like elves. Thought this, this is going to work. Well, I don't want to stereotype based on national origin. You know, HR people can't do that. But <laughs> Irish leprechauns are known for mischief. <laughs> yeah, and it started as soon as they got there. I mean, first thing they did, they unwrapped some of the kids' presents. Let me show you what they did. Put a battery in there. No toy included. <laughs> and that was for the good kids. And then they started leaving notes and making it look like it came from the elf on the shelf. There was one that said, let's see what it said. It said, Santa saw your posts on Facebook, you're getting socks and a Bible for Christmas. <laughs> and then the other one said, go ahead, be naughty. Save Santa a trip. <laughs> you know, and that, that wasn't the worst one. The worst one was they broke into Santa's office. They got the list of who's been naughty and who's been nice. And they made some very inappropriate phone calls to the girls on the naughty list. <laughs> <laughs> to the point that some of the girls on the naughty list got big checks from Santa for Christmas. <laughs> and we had to fire the leprechauns for violating our anti-harassment policy. And then it got worse. Had two employees get in a conflict, Rudolph and Olive. You probably know Rudolph from the song, you know, the Red Nosed Reindeer. Uh, Olive was in the song too, not a lot of people remember it, it, the part about Olive, the other reindeer, uh, <laughs> used to laugh and call him names. She did. She was making fun of Rudolph. But you know, he kind of deserved it. He was a jerk. I mean, he really was, especially when he'd been drinking, which was most of the time. I mean, that's how he got the red nose. <laughs> you know, and they used to call him Rudolph. I mean, and, and, and you know, I tried to get that resolved, tried to get that resolved. 
um and that that's when i found out to all that stuff about rudolph leading the sleigh at night and that kind of stuff fake news it was it was it was a cover-up want to know what really happened say uh-huh yeah okay um what really happened was santa was delivering presents he was on a rooftop across the street from o'malley's bar and Rudolph slipped his harness, went over, got a snoot full of gin, went rogue. Going down the wrong side of the road, he seen the speed limit, bam, ran over a little lady. Another song you probably heard, Grandma's got run over by your reindeer. Yeah, that, that was Rudolph. Um, yeah, Santa found him the next day sleeping it off in the gutter. And they made up this alibi. That whole thing about leading the sleigh with the shiny nose never happened. Fake news. And I, I was appalled. So I went to the press. Olive and I went to the press. And we told them what really happened. And you know what happened then? Santa had his PR lady, his press secretary, send out a press release. I gotta read it to you. Couldn't believe it. It says Santa's pleased to inform the public that contrary to reports put out by the biased media, Rudolph's recent absence from Santa's reindeer team was not due to his being in a detox center. <laughs> Rudolph is simply on a much-deserved vacation. Santa also emphatically denies the recent leak from someone on his staff asserting that Rudolph was involved in a hit-and-run accident on Christmas Eve, and that Rudolph's red nose got that way not from cold but from substance abuse. It's regretful that Olive, the other reindeer, was quoted as saying that Rudolph was a wino, a slacker who never pulled his weight. <laughs> that unfortunate comment has nothing to do with the real Rudolph, and it's nothing more than an attempt to discredit Rudolph. Rudolph's considering defamation of character. So what could I do? I had to resign, um, and next thing I know, I heard Santa was being investigated by the FAA for flying without a license, the EPA for reindeer emissions. I mean, the place went to 